Hey, welcome guys. In this Onward Photo Raw tutorial, you'll learn how to mask your color or at least improve upon it and improve your photos. We'll be working with the channel mixer, color adjustment, and color balance filters. So let's get started. This photo in front of me is of the Galapagos Islands. It does have a few basic tonal adjustments as well as some noise reduction and some sharpening. So the photo looks pretty good, but I can make it better and make it pop a little bit. So I'm going to go to the local adjustments, actually the effects panel and click on add filter, click on channel mixer. So the channel mixer is a little bit confusing with these as sliders and it's mainly used for black and white photography or infrared photography. Uh, infrared is not a photo I have right now, but there is this infrared slider here. So I'm just going to reset this. And now we need to figure out how these sliders work in the channel mixer because there's red, green, and blue. And then each channel has red, green, and blue sliders as well as the constant. So what's happening here? So with the red channel, when I increase the red slider, it's at 100 already, but if I increase it, it increases and changes the red channel or increases the red. If I decrease it, it goes to cyan because cyan is the complementary color of red. So let me just reset this. If I go to the green channel, you see it's at 100 here and R and blue, red and blue are at zero. And if I increase the green, it becomes more green. If I decrease it, it becomes magenta, the complementary color of green. So I'll reset this back to 100. And when I go to blue, you see blue's at 100. If I increase blue, it'll become more blue. If I decrease it, it'll become more yellow, which is the complementary color. Now, while I'm in the blue slider, what happens to red and green when I move this? When you first look at it, if you change these sliders, you think they'll become more red or less red or more cyan. But what it really does is if I scroll over the mouse, it says change the weight of the red channel on the overall mix. So in other words, if I increase the red, it becomes more blue. Or if I decrease it, it becomes more yellow. And the same thing happens with green if I reset this. If I increase the green, it changes the green, or sorry, it changes the blue across the green channel. If I decrease it, it changes the yellow. So that's how it works. Same thing happens if I go to red. If I increase the green, it'll become more red while I'm in the red channel. So yeah, I know that sounds a little bit confusing. So let me try to explain it to you a little bit better. So if I go back to this infrared style right here, let's see what happened. On the blue channel, it increased it to 200. On the blue channel, it decreased it to 100. On the green and on the red, it's all about the same, it looks like. So if I, and it looks like black and white right now, the photo or infrared, but if I adjust the blue on the red channel, it increases the red. And if I decrease it, it increases the cyan. So it's very confusing. So you gotta be careful on which channel you're on and which slider you're adjusting. But let me make this photo pop and give you a better example. If I go to this slider or these styles right here and I click on vivid green, I want to make the green here pop more. So let's see the before and the after. So that looks okay. So let's see what it did in the green channel. It decreased the red and pop or made the green section slider 200 and nothing in the red or channels. So let me reset this and go back to the green slider or the green channel. And now I'm going to overcook this image by increasing the green to 200. So now I made this green really green like I wanted, but I messed up the rest of the image. So I need to start balancing it. And the best way to balance this image at 200 with the green is to decrease the blue and add a little bit more yellow no, magenta to it actually, which is the complementary color. And you could already see the image is getting better, but now I overcooked it. So I need to balance a little bit. And the red, you can stay at, let's say, pop it up to 80, 80 something. And now decrease the blue, make it look a little bit better and play around with this. So now it's really, really like neon green. So I'm just gonna balance it out a little bit, increase the red. So now the image looks a little bit cooler. I mean, not cooler as in terms of temperature, but it looks a lot better. But the green is a lot 
overcook here. So I'm going to go to the red channel. Let's see, decrease the red, get rid of some of this red in the red channel, in the sky, the green, decrease it a little bit, and the blue, add a little bit of blue, increase it a little bit, about 18. Now I'm going to go to the blue channel, and I'm going to correct the green a little bit more now. So decrease the green and increase the blue slightly. So here's the before and here's the after. So this image looks improved, but this part of the image looks a little bit overcooked unless you're going for the neon party lights. So I can go to the opacity and decrease it. And now that looks a little bit better. And to make a better transition along here, what I can do is click on the mask. I can apply a gradient mask. Let's see if I still have it saved. Go to the gradient mask, have it centered, and go right here. Adjust this, make it smaller. I need to invert this mask, so I'll click on this. Rotate it, get it bigger, a little bit bigger smaller here just trying to make it make the mask around here and then whoops this is wrong we'll delete this go back to this mask now increase the feather okay that looks good and now to improve this transition along here i can decrease the density so I'll press go with the keyboard shortcut to show you how the mask looks can go to the red overlay. So that's where the mask is being impacted. And I'll keep the density around 25, turn off the overlay, and that looks a lot better. So this is the before, and this is the after with the channel mixer. And just to make this area pop, I'll decrease the opacity a little bit more. Now the image looks a lot better. Just keep in mind, this is mainly for black and white photography or infrared photography, but you could do different things with it if you want. With this landscape photo, I'm going to show you an easier or more practical way of using the channel mixer with this twilight photo. So this photo I took in Patagonia in Argentina with the Canon 6D and it's exposed really well and the color and the saturation was imaged very well. So there's no color adjustments made to it or tonal adjustments. There's only some noise reduction applied to it and some cropping. So other than that, this image was photographed pretty good in my opinion. But going to the effects panel, I'll go to add filter and then I'll go to the channel mixer. And then I'm just gonna look at some of these styles. So this is the IR swap, which changes or swaps the blue and red channel. There's the infrared, there's the vivid blue, there's the green, whoops, yeah, there's the green, and there's the red. So all these look pretty good. I can change it with the opacity if I want, but I'll reset this, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to improve the color upon this photo with the channel mixer. So I'm going to go to the blue channel, or the blue output channel, increase the blue here, and you can see this nice bluish purple color come to it that's added across the entire channel just by adding the blue here. So if I play with the green, let's see what happens. It looks pretty good if I stick around the middle, increase it a little bit, and let's see what happens with the red. That looks pretty cool. So with this one basic adjustment of just adjusting the blue channel in the channel mixer, it improved the image a lot. I want to make it look a little bit different or decrease the intensity. I can just decrease the opacity. So here's the before and here's the after and at 100 opacity, here's the before and here's the after. So just with a quick channel mixer adjustment, I made this image look really interesting and I uh, hope you guys like it. Now you'll learn how to use the color adjustment filter on this photo that I took in the Galapagos Islands as well. 
This is a blue-footed booby and it's a chick in Punta Pit on a San Cristobal Island. Anyways, I already have the noise and sharpening applied to this image and I don't have any basic adjustments applied to it yet. So I'm going to apply some Brilliance AI and this looks overcooked. So I'll increase or decrease the amount to about 15, 14. That looks good. So I'll go to the effects panel, click on add filter and click on color adjustment. So what the color adjustment filter does is it allows you to target the hue, saturation and brightness of individual colors. So for example, let's say the red here, I want to target the red. I can click on red right here. Actually, that's the default. And then I can change the hue. Then I can change the saturation if I want. And then I can also change the brightness. I'm just going to reset this. There's a few styles here as well, called foliage. Change the foliage or the herbs or the bush here. There's the fall, there's the sky, and there's a few more, it looks like here. Actually, no, there's actually one, two, three, four, five. Another way to target these colors is by using the eyedropper tool. So for example here, let's say I want to target the feet here. The feet are not as blue as I want. And by the way, usually the chicks, they're not born with blue feet. They'll get it when they're a little bit older. So I'll target here. I'll go to saturation, click on the eyedropper tool, click on the feet where it's most blue. And then I'm going to drag it to the right. And you can see it actually selected the aqua or cyan color and I increased the saturation. I can change the blue a little bit more. And let's see the before and after, before and after. So I did increase the saturation here and change the hue a little bit, but keep in mind, there's a little bit of aqua here. So the water in the background also adjusted. Another thing I can do is I can go to the blue right here. I can go to the saturation, increase it a little bit more. Go back to the aqua change the hue, decrease the brightness, and that makes the feet stick a little bit out, but you can see it impacted the water right here. So one thing I can do is I can go to the mask and then I can go to region. And let's see if I can select the animal. So the animal, it doesn't do a good job because it doesn't affect or target the feet. So I'll just click on cancel. I'll just make sure I'm on the brush here. Masking brush. And I'll click on paint. I'll inverse this and paint right here. That looks a little bit better. So let's see the before and after. Here's the before and here's the after. So now it just targets the feet. I should zoom in actually a little bit more. Zoom in on the feet. That looks a little bit better. So here's the before and here's the after of using the color adjustment filter. And now going back to this, if I want to add more adjustments, since this adjustment only impacts or affects the feet, I need to add another color adjustment filter. And let's say this time I want to impact the green or this yellow here. So this time I'll just select styles and click on foliage and make it more green. And let's see what it did. It adjusts the hue of the yellow, the range, and then there's the green. It increases the saturation. By the way, the range, it targets the colors around the yellow here in this section on the color wheel. So if I increase the range, it'll select more yellow or more colors that are similar to yellow around the color wheel. And if I decrease the range, it'll be less. A better example is if I show you on the green here, I increase the saturation, but if I decrease the range, there'll be less saturation here. If I increase it, there's more, if I decrease it, there's less. And that's pretty much it for the color adjustment. It's pretty easy to use. And if you do need to target a color, you can always use this eyedropper tool and adjust the hue, saturation, and brightness with it. I'm going to color grade this photo of this mountain range using the color balance filter. 
This photo I took of Mount Fitzroy in Patagonia, and it's actually the same mountain or the logo of the Patagonia clothing brand. Now I'm gonna to go to the effects panel, click on add filter, go to color balance. So the color balance allows you to target or color grade the midtones, shadows, and highlights individually. So for example, I'm gonna to go to the highlight section here, this color wheel, and in the center, you can see this circle. So if I pull the circle away from the center, you can increase the saturation depending on which direction you move the circle. So I'm moving towards away from the center and towards the outer part of the circle of the highlights, and I'm increasing the green or saturating it with green. Now this outer circle or sphere right here, if I move it around, I can change the hue of the highlights. So if I go right here, I can change it to this fuchsia or purplish color. And now this slider, it changes the brightness value of the highlights. I'm just gonna reset this. And now if you have a problem moving the slider of the saturation straight, you can press and hold shift then you'll be able to move the saturation slider straight. So I'm just gonna reset this and let's take a look at some of the styles. There's warm, watermelon, sea foam. And I'll reset it again. And I'm gonna give this the classic orange and teal. So I'll make the highlights teal. So I'm gonna go right here, increase the saturation and make sure the hue is on teal or aqua. That looks good. And for the shadows, I'm gonna move it towards orange and don't saturate it too much. Let's see if I wanna keep the mid-tones the same. Let's see what happens if I add a little bit of fuchsia or pink to the mid-tones. And that looks a little bit good. And I'll increase the saturation here of the highlights. Increase the brightness of the shadows a little bit. And that looks pretty good. So here's the before and here's the after. So just to sum it up, the color balance filter, it allows you to change the color of the midtones, shadows, and highlights individually. And that's pretty much it. And if you guys enjoyed this video, you know what to do. And as always, live easy, sleep breezy, and stay lovely.